The Life of Louise, Duchess of Argyle Born on the eve of many European revolutions, Louise certainly showed herself to be a strong, opinionated individual. She was born on the 18th of March 1848 and was the sixth of nine children born to Queen Victoria and Prince Albert of Saxe Coburg and Gotha. Her birth was assisted with chloroform, a controversial pain relief at the time. From an early age, Louise was a firecracker who was almost too curious for her family. She was prone to asking questions, so much so that she earned the nickname Little Miss Y. Her rebelliousness only developed further as she grew older. When Louise was just 13 years old, her father, Prince Albert, passed away. The death of her father was extremely hard for the princess. Her mother was engulfed in her own grief and did not give any support to her children. Louise felt very alone, unable to get the help she needed for her grief. For four years, Louise and her siblings remained at home, out of the eye of the public. When Louise turned 17, she hoped to enter society. Grand balls were a huge part for the Victorian elite, and when a child came of age, they would have a coming out ball. Louise was expecting to have a grand ball, but was disappointed and furious when her mother cancelled the occasion. Queen Victoria decided that mourning for Prince Albert was more important, and no one was allowed to have fun in her presence. Despite having a stormy relationship with her mother, Louise and her mother worked together. Louise was her assistant and later secretary. Louise found the work boring but found entertainment elsewhere. Rumours began to spread that Louise was involved in an affair with her younger brother's tutor, Robinson Duckworth. The Queen found out and dismissed the tutor. Louise despised her mother's endless rules and protocol, and so she ventured out into the world. She became a famed artist, learning her skills from the National Art Training School. She became a sculptor, in a time when it was considered unladylike for a woman to sculpt. Louise rebelled against the status quo. Louise was connected to several men during her life. She was the Victorian ideal of a beauty, and she was often called the Queen's most beautiful daughter. So it is no surprise that men were falling for her. At 18, Louise had an affair with Walter Sterling, one of her brother's tutors and it was rumoured that Louise became pregnant from this affair. Unmarried, this would have caused real concern for the royal family and would have damaged Louise's reputation. The man who started the rumour was Charles Lowcock, the man who had delivered all of the Queen's children. Lowcock's son, Frederick, adopted the baby, named Henry, in 1867, which at the time was a very strange thing for an unmarried man to do. Frederick also received a large allowance and was given an apartment in St. James's Palace. Henry Lowcock's descendants have applied for permission to test the DNA of Henry's coffin to that of Tsarina Alexandra of Russia to check for a match, but they were refused, meaning the truth will never be fully known. Louise felt passionately about serving the ornate British people. Using her influence as her mother's secretary, Louise helped to open a children's hospital and became the face of royal philanthropy. Though Louise was able to enjoy her twenties, the expectations of marriage was looming over her. The Queen was set about finding her a husband. Louise did not want to marry royalty, as she already had to struggle with her own royal family and did not want to deal with another royal family. Louise grew close to a man by the name of John Campbell. Though not a prince, he was from the nobility. Much of her siblings were against the match, but the Queen saw sense and allowed her daughter to wed John. The couple married at St George's Chapel on the 21st of March 1871. For the first time since Henry VIII, a person of royal blood had married a member of the British nobility. This caused intense curiosity and huge crowds formed outside the church. Policemen were called in to form barriers to keep control. 
the couple honeymooned in Surrey before residing in Kensington Palace. Campbell was chosen by the Prime Minister in 1878 to be Canada's Governor General and the couple moved to Canada for the job. During her time in Canada, Louise promoted the founding of the National Gallery of Canada and the Royal Canadian Academy of Arts. The people of Canada loved her and the province of Alberta was named in her honour. In 1880, Louise was involved in a sleigh accident. The carriage overturned and Louise was dragged through the snow for 400 metres. She sustained a concussion and a torn earlobe, but recovered. Louise had a good heart and used her wealth and influence to create a medical fund that could provide assistance to men fighting in the Northwest Rebellion. Her actions in Canada caused a bit of jealousy for her siblings, who were under the watchful eye of their mother and thus were trapped by the Queen's protocols. When Louise returned to Britain, she didn't receive much of a welcome. Louise was close to a few family members, one of whom was her brother-in-law, Prince Henry of Battenberg, her sister Beatrice's husband. She possibly got on too well with him and people began to suspect that she was in having an affair with him. We will never truly know for sure, but when Prince Henry passed in 1896, Louise remarked that he was the greatest friend she had ever had and that she would miss him more than Beatrice. The affair rumours were fueled further by her own marriage. Louise and John were not in a happy marriage and they lived separate lives. John may have been gay, but Louise was fairly open-minded and didn't seem to care, as their marriage was built for convenience more than anything else. Something that Queen Victoria was unhappy with her daughter about was that Louise was a feminist. Louise was a very vocal supporter for the suffragette movement. Louise used her wealth to help ordinary people, especially widows. She would often pay for funerals so widows could give their husbands proper burials. When her mother was set to celebrate 50 years on the throne, a sculpture was being commissioned for the Queen. Louise wanted to sculpt the statue, but the Queen told her to submit the design anonymously and the best piece would be chosen. When Louise's design was chosen, people doubted that it was hers, but Louise proved herself to be a capable and talented artist. In 1900, John's father passed and John became the ninth Duke of Argyll with Louise as his duchess. Though they didn't have a very loving marriage, Louise was dedicated to her husband. As they grew older, their friendship grew and flourished. John became unwell and from 1911, Louise began to take care of her husband. He passed in 1914 and the loneliness and grief she felt was immense. Louise became close to her sister Beatrice as she got older. They were neighbours and lived in Kensington Palace in adjoining rooms. Louise lived until the age of 91, passing on the 3rd of December 1939.